I go in there already? Oh, hi. We are not complete without her senses. We knew Kairos would issue an edict on her valley. Perhaps the overlord has a sixth sense of humor, but I can assure I laughed when I learned the death sentence doomed the Oathbreaker and the puppet equally. I had such low expectations for the servant of an ar so-called Archon of Justice. Tunon seems a little more than a passive stooge that sits on the throne to legitimize the carnage and plunder of the other Archons. The face of prosperity and that lets Kairos claim one thing while being another. I would have hoped you actually did serve justice, the notion not the Archon, but your actions have said otherwise. At least I can thank you for proving your cynicalism is entirely wanted. If you survive the upcoming slaughter, bear witness as I, Targus Ari of the Verdian Guard, do take responsibility for the actions of my crew. Should my warriors come before the court acts, tell Turan they were starving, desperate and easily manipulated into struggle that was mine, not theirs. Sell this lie as, as you will sell the lies of the Overlord. Did I have to do anything else? Oh, uh, I need to talk to Service. Service is outside, I think. Um, things happened, their commander's not out there, and they didn't know about the edict. Oh my god. With all due respect, our courts have proven themselves against the Apex Fools time and time again. What can your Urshakos do other than get in the way? I don't want to be here, Service, and my orders don't involve proving our value to you. If the Great General doesn't want magic on his side, then he can order us to stand out and sit this one out. I don't question what your mages bring to the table, Hellspar, but I have my reservations about your leaders. Why couldn't Radek show up to the siege himself? If he has more pressing issues than the state of conquest, I should like to hear them from his mouth. If Radix is not inclined to help, perhaps say nothing. If we conclude Radix is ignoring his duties, then he'll need to be replaced. I don't take any pleasure from the idea, but we may have to take the steps if he proves intractable. I hate to upset the claim of commanding during a time of war. Perhaps Radek's brother can convince him to remember his duty. Fate Biner, I thank you for your part you played. You didn't have to risk yourself, but you did so all the same. Alright, now we can do all that other stuff. Oh boy. Can't do that. Alright, let's go. I have to go talk to two Archons bickering like children. How can we trust your rabble not to turn at this last moment? How many of your conscripts have family bonds to the Vendrian Guard? It is decided. The Disfavored will take the vanguard of the assault. It is the only way to assure success before the edict comes to pass. Oh, you're so young. We can forgive you for being stupid. Without your Archon of Stone to bring down those walls, you're out of your element. Only the Chorus has the numbers required to swarm the walls from all sides. We will lead the vanguard of this battle. The best the Chorus could accomplish would be leaving a ramp-shaped pile of corpses propped up against the walls for my warriors to use. Their fortifications are not a concern. Even understaffed, my Earthshakers could breach the masonry in short order. Another brilliant idea! Cairn's cult is, we're sure, every bit as trustworthy and sane as the late Archon of Stone himself. Uh, you did notice the spire at the center of the citadel? Uh, hard to miss it, being only the tallest thing on the horizon and such. Certainly your Earth Mages won't do anything stupid like, say, breaking the spire's foundation. What could possibly go wrong? I trust them more than I trust your circus of rapists, cell swords, and turncoat tearsmen. Tunon's fate binder has arrived.
Our operation in Echo Hall Crossing and Trip Nettle Wilderness were successful. Why aren't you two marching towards Ascension Hall? <sighs> Nothing would please us more than to be done with this wretched valley. Perhaps if we had more support from the disfavored and from the court. Now that we are all assembled, I want reports. The Scarlet Chorus was going to resolve the Oathbreaker presence in the Outer Valley. What became of that? Yes, what did become of that? We should know already, yet we do not. If we are not mistaken, the Fate Binder played a pivotal role in this operation. Fifth Eye, shed light on this baffling question. The Oathbreaker's raiders were broken, and more importantly, their captain was taken, and he told us... Nothing! Curse you motherless fucks! What have you brought but fire and su- <sighs> Oh, suffering doesn't really capture the nuance of what we've done. Apologies. We've been savoring this one's defiance. We know much of their inner workings, their desperate allies, their foolish hopes. This is our battle to lose. Why I am on equal footing with Kairos' clown, I will never understand. So, Fate Binder, you would deem this mission successful? The Oathbreakers were scattered. I took I took the captain alive as requested. There is not much to add. Iron Marshal, I understand we've established a foothold across the Matani. Report. Securing Matani was a gruesome affair. An agent of the School of Tides still lives, and the, the river was turned against us. Despite our losses, the day ended a success at the Echo Call Crossing, though victory came at a great cost. When it came time to secure the nearby Echo Village, there was some distressing discovery. The villagers had been stashing iron weaponry, no doubt stolen from our supply lines. Commander Antelio wished to burn the village, but the chorus disagreed and the fate buyer backed their claim. Their leader, Captain Matani Sibo, was vested in combat and taken captive by the Scarlet Chorus. Despite the disfavor taking the lead on this operation, fate buyer felt it was necessary to apply chorus doctrine to the captives. A most wise judgment, good fate finder. The Oathbreaker Captain will no doubt provide hours of entertainment. And perhaps even some useful information. This will be just like Stalwart, when your own conscripts chose suicide over service to the Chorus. She'll be no different than the others. Petulant, uncooperative, and motivated to feed you false information. Um, perhaps some Tearsmen are smart enough to choose death over being associated with the Chorus. Ah, do you think a Tearsman is so pathetic and harmless, yet so pathological to afraid? What, uh, hmm. Calling me a coward in not so many words? You and Narata cut from the same cloth. Enough! If these are my allies, why bother with the enemy? Even the lowborn Oathbreakers have the honor and decency to... Oh, finish your thought, old chap. They have the honor and decency to... To what? To abide by some sort of deal you made with them? If you two are unrolling... Then the impasse is clear. We both wish for the honor of leading this final assault on the Vendrian Guard. Since Tunon is not here to select the rightful bearer of this honor, we must turn to the Archon's proxy. With whom do you stand? You march together, or not at all. You test my patience, Fate Finder. We did not ask for a weak compromise that leaves all parties unsatisfied. Whom do you support? Are you going to let the Scarlet Chorus traitors have their way? Or will you stand by Kairos' true disciples, the disfavored? 
I hate both of you. Earthbinders, Scarlet Crusade. The Earthbinders just wants to throw people at the wall. I mean, the Scarlet Crusade just wants to throw people at the wall. This favored. We don't have much resources. We don't know if we can trust the Earthbinders. This favored will lead. You honor us, as I knew you would. You have made the right choice. The disfavored have stood at the forefront of battle since the first days of the war. And now, we have the honor of winning this final battle. Our beloved chorus! Oh, we have too many lives to protect. We can't allow your foolish decision to destroy us all! You would dare harm me and our guests from the court? Well... By Kairos' word, this means war! How did it come to this? Are you sure you wish to go to war with the chorus? What other choice am I giving? It is clear the voices of Narat would endanger all of us out of vanity. Besides, we all know when this war is over, someone must rule and protect the tears. So I will start protecting the tears from the depravity of the Scarlet Chorus. I saw you step in front of me, thank you. Just old soldier reflexes. Couldn't be sure if it was trying a simple illusion or a bolt of fire. Either way. Needed to be sure my guests didn't perish in my war tent. Wouldn't be able to live that one down. We have to take it without their help. Yes. And instead of having false allies on our side, at least we can march on the Citadel knowing full well who is friend and foe. And it goes without saying, the Disfavored need you now for this glorious battle. Please speak with the Iron Marshal. She will give you the specifics of our plan. The Archon of Secrets left behind one of his spies. Perhaps we should send her back to her master in pieces. Something to say, Beric? Nothing at present, Archon. Forgive the interruption. Versus with me. You would harbor the Archon's henchmen in your company? This is aiding and abetting the voices of Narat. I cannot stand for it. Maybe I want the voices to think I'm being carefully observed. The voices of Narat knows better. Of that much, I can assure you. Whatever deceitful ploy you have in mind, he can think lifetimes ahead of it. You are playing a dangerous game, Binder. If you wish to hold a venomous serpent so close, I will allow you your own self-destruction. Now leave me. When you are ready to join the assault, speak to the Iron Marshal. bad this is all bad this is all very bad it's a bad 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 thing um at your service fate binder what do you need
What did you have in mind? What do you think are of our present circumstances? Well, there's the edict, and the incompetence of the sword gone, so it'll take the fear to get us out. I would Talkative, when he isn't writing, he's a sword. Go ahead, Fate Finder. That would be an understatement, and I thought you'd never ask. Since you're obviously at a huge disadvantage, I'll let you pick our weapon of choice. Knives. Exotic. Good choice. I'll leave you to guess which one is my dominant hand. <laughs> you held your own. Call me impressed. Need anything else, or did I tire you out? All right, let's talk to Burick. You look as if you have something on your mind. By all means. What can I do for you? Influence. Horse rats, blood chanters, uh, being with Siren with their blah blah blah. Good. Let's move on to another matter. Ooh. You look as if you have something on your mind. What can I do for you? You look as if you have something. What can I do? For it is a symbol of Kairos's will, one that I am not like. <laughs> He's running down the story. Um, all right, let's talk to him. Who are you? Apologies if I didn't properly introduce myself. All my works are written under the name Sage Lantry of the Vilum Citadel. But outside of popular citations, Lantry will suffice. Tell me about the Sages. 400 years, Sages devoted to preservation of stuff. What's your role? Chief Writers. Truth, proper sequence, ongoing life work at Sage who leads the school. Um, uh, say sure, incarcerated, incinerated, great. Well, fuck, thanks to all the recent deaths, maybe I'll be next in line. Let's archive away things later. What do you know about the Vilm Citadel? Beautiful sanctuary, a parchment and ink. Now the blight. Sages found themselves on Kairos Rule, learned the sage for copying, spreading lies, forbidding knowledge, put an end to the citadel with an edict of fire. Oh no, it's set aflame. When we bind our books, we bind them to last. Our most important is worry against fire and malices. So many of the books remain intact in the shelves or melted away. Tell you, wind up in the well. 
Uh, you were in the flame, you were laboring, seven sparring. Preservation. Follow his instructions. Or breakers. Uh, strategy is largely not in existence. Of course it is. Surrendered. Blah. Tried to flee, a youngster tackled me out of the fire. It's been running theme ever since. Born in Sunder, no kids. What few belongings of fathery love I got were satisfied by taking care of carrier birds. Uh, learned my sigils 30 years back. Defend myself in the open life field study. For no matters of stuff. Alright, how am I with people? I got a lot of stuff to learn. Ugh. Nobody's getting along with anybody. They hate me. They hate me so much. They don't hate me as much. They hate me a lot. He likes me. Ish. He likes me. She really likes me. Don't know who the fuck. Um, um, <laughs> eh. He hates me so much. Ah, oh, I pissed him off. I pissed him off. Alright. Uh, reset? Oh, I got a bunch of scrolls, too. Um, weapons, armor. Can you learn it? Oh, you already know it. Can you learn it? Nope. So I can sell the rest of this shit. Okay. Um, we have a staff. <laughs> Sigil of life. Sigil of illusion. Sigil of this. Ooh. So your strength. Uh, everything's gone to shit. Uh, 